Hey guys, it's Lena Blake with Redefined Horizons, and this is another Field Survey Friday video. And in this video, I want to answer a very important question. Do land surveyors still need to take field notes? What do you think? This question came up. I was uh, giving a guest lecture to the students at East LA uh, College, East, East Los Angeles College, so shout out to uh, Professor Galagos and all his folks down there. And uh, the student asked me, one of the students asked me this question at the end of my lecture. So what is my answer? Do land surveyors still need to take field notes? Maybe. That's my answer. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't have a good, I don't have a good answer. Um, I usually have very strong opinions on things like this, and, uh, and I don't have strong opinion on this one. I could go either way. Um, I could be convinced of, of either a yes or no answer on that. Um, it's something I struggle with a little bit. And so uh, I, I want to explain what kind of what I was taught, why I don't know if that applies anymore, and it might, might not, and then tell you, well, what do I do? I kind of take a middle ground, okay? So, what was I taught about field notes? Here's what I was taught. Always use a bound field book. Never erase anything in your field book and write everything down. That's what I was taught. <laughs> I was taught that in college. I was taught it in my very first job as a survey rock, Robin on a field crew. And the, the whole idea was uh, that if you went to court, uh, if, there was a, if there was a lawsuit about what you did in the field, you could go to court and the field book could prove, uh, could prove what was done and could, could maybe save you from a lawsuit. So that, that was the idea. So is that required still with modern technology? I don't know. I don't know if it is. Um, I will, so let me tell you what I do know. Um, I don't know of any relatively modern case in which having a bound written field book with no eraser marks uh, saved a land surveyor in a lawsuit. Now, there are some older cases uh, that have, have argued that the field notes from a survey could be used as evidence of the intent of a, of a surveyor. Uh, but that's a different thing. You know, that, that's, that's not a surveyor being saved from a lawsuit. Um, now, that doesn't mean there aren't cases that exist relatively modern cases that show that a land surveyor was saved because he had something written down in his field book, but I don't know of any. So if you if you know of a, of a case or even of a situation where that happened, please let me know. Uh, email landon.blake at redefinehorizons.com and let me know because I would, I would really like to hear the story and I'd like to share it with others. But I don't know of any cases. I've also never seen that in my own practice. I've never seen a situation of either myself or another surveyor being saved because something was written down in a bound field book with no erasure marks. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to rule out the possibility, uh, but I just, I, I just haven't seen it in my practice. And I also know that uh, with the information we store in data collectors and photo, digital photos and digital videos cover a lot, of, a lot of ground that we used to cover with field notes, and they provide an excellent record of the work that was done. So I have been in situations where having a digital photo saved my company from a potential claim. On a, on a construction jo job. And I am a big, big proponent of uh, digital photos and digital video from the, from the field crews. So I just, I just don't know. I, it seems to me like that paranoid fear that I was taught about field notes and lawsuits may have, it was either overblown or it was in a, it was from a different era. Um, and I could be proven wrong. So I, I hope some other surveyors that are watching this video uh, will reach out to me and set me straight and give me some good examples of, of where you, you know, you need to write a lot down in a bound field book with no erase marks. Um, you know, the argument has always been, well, you can, you can, you can manipulate digital files. Well, that's true. Um, you can also fake field notes. <laughs> you can even fake part of a book of bound field notes if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, at some point, you know, the response sometimes people will give is, oh, well, that's true, but the party, the, the field crew, the party chief could swear an oath that that was his original set of field notes. And uh, well, you know, the, the same guy could swear an oath that the, that the digi di di digital files hadn't been manipulated, or I, as the LS, could take that oath in court. So I don't, I don't see a big difference there. But again, I could be educated. I could be, uh, I could be convinced otherwise. So given the uncertainty, um, what do I do? What do I do as a, as a land surveyor? And I will tell you that as a young surveyor, before I was licensed, I wrote everything down, man. I, I wrote everything down. I did sketches. I, I had really not, I worked really hard. My field notes were a source of pride. So uh, this is not a lazy field note taker that's telling you this. So what do I do now in my own practice? But before I tell you what I do in my own practice, let me give you a little caveat here. 
a little disclaimer, I put my boots on the ground of every job we do here at Refine Horizon, something I'm proud of as a licensed surveyor. Not every licensed surveyor does that. So if you're a licensed surveyor that doesn't get to visit the, the site uh, on all your jobs, then field builds may be more important to you. I'm already on every job, and I, I hit the dirt and I see the property corners, so that may make a difference. But here's what I do in my practice. I do record some notes. I have a standard set of forms that we use that, uh, that, we, that we record some notes on. I will tell you that um, when I was growing up as a land surveyor, when I was a baby land surveyor, um, I had to memorize uh, more than a dozen different types of field note forms. Um, started in college and carried on to my early career. I don't make my people do that. We have a standard set of forms that we use. Um, everybody's got a graph pad if they need it. Uh, they can do free form notes, but we have a standard set of, of forms. It makes it easier to train the crews, and I find I get more consistent note taking when I do that. So what goes on those standard forms? It, it's mostly data that's not recorded in the data collector. So we don't record the angle and slope distance, horizontal angle, slope distance, and zenith angle, and point number and description to every point we shoot. Uh, we just don't do that. It's just, and I don't know that you could be competitive in this in this marketplace. We do write down things that aren't necessarily either stored directly in the data collector or easy to understand from just reading a raw file. So. Uh, I, I have my guys do a timeline. They tell me, kind of, they give me a, a breakdown of what happened during the day. Um, you know, when we do our total station notes, we don't write down every point number, but we write down rod height changes and we'll say, hey, point number 10,000 to 10,200 was the south side of the building. Point number 200 to point number 250 was the north side of the building. You know, point number 300 to 450 was the park, the north parking lot. FYI, point 342, we couldn't get the lid open, you know, special stuff that comes up. Uh, so they they do kind of a survey narrative, a survey timeline. We do have information on every setup. So every time we set the gun up, we've got a form. I want to know where were you set, what your backside, what you check, how were your checks, what did you shoot from that setup, what what are your residuals. We do some basic notes for GPS surveys. What's your point number, start time, end time, P dot, rod height. So we do we do some field notes. There is a little bit of duplication of what's in the data collector, but not a lot. Maybe twenty five percent. You know, maybe less than that, maybe maybe 15%. So most of most of what the technical stuff is in the data collector file, we don't write that write that down on the notes. The notes are mainly to help the folks in the office understand the work that was done in the field when they're looking at a raw data file. That's the primary purpose of our field notes. So, a couple other quick things. Uh, we use aerials now for map sketches. I don't make my guys freehand sketch. I remember my first party chief used to make me freehand sketch stuff all the time. I don't know that I was super good at it. Uh, it's just too easy now. We've got, uh, you know, satellite imagery or good UAV aerial photography. You know, we print that stuff out in great, gray scale and give my, all my guys carry a rainbow collection of Sharpies and they sketch stuff up on the, on the aerial. I, I feel like I get better results, I get better results from that than I would if I asked them to freehand sketch stuff. Uh, we scan all our notes. Our notes get scanned to PDF, so we have them digital. We take tons of photos. Photos are really important. Um, I think it's definitely easier now to take video and photos than it used to be in the field, and photos are a really great asset. So we also take oblique aerial photos from the, with the UAV when we fly the UAV, which is another form of project documentation. Um, so I would encourage surveyors, if you're worried about being excellent, being an excellent boundary surveyor, uh, you know, I, I would worry less about my notes probably and more about my photos. Um, not that notes aren't important, but photos are really important too. Um, we, we manage all our raw data, so we have a system where we, we save and back up our raw data. You know, we always keep an original copy of our raw data. We look at all our raw data in Trimble Business Center. And then, you know, more importantly, just because I, I, I I'm not 100% sure that, that, you know, huge volumes of field notes are super critical now with, with our digital data collection. That doesn't mean a good, legible, accurate record of the work that performed is not important. So we do have what we call field drawing. We have a boundary drawing. Uh, we have a couple survey reports, control report and a boundary report that get done on every job. Those get PDF'd and they are part of the, the published record that we have about the work that was done on a project. So I do think that's really important. What the digital tools have done is they've, they've allowed us to spend less time on note taking and more time on those other kind of supplemental records that, that give a really excellent high level view of the work that was done on a project our decision-making process, the judgment calls, how we evaluated evidence, the, the methods that we use. So, 
Do land surveyors still need to take field notes? Maybe. I take some. I don't take a lot. I, I take a bit. Um, I'd like to hear from some other surveyors. I'm sure there's some that take no notes. I'm sure there's some that take uh, copious notes, that take abundant notes. And uh, maybe there's even some guys that still don't use a data collector. I don't know. Uh, but I'd like to get your comments. I'd like to know if I'm opening myself up to huge legal liability cases. I want cases if you have them. Or if you have a real life story, I'd like to hear that too. Don't just give me your opinion. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that helps some guys and I uh, hope that does a little better job of answering the question for the students down at East Los Angeles College. I know that guy kind of caught me off guard. I didn't have a super great answer, so the student. All right, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it.